I believe we don't serve a mystical God. And when people come and say, and say you are having that problem, you are having that problem. And uh, I don't believe it should, be a, it should be hidden. Or else people will think people, we are just making fun of ourselves here. <laughs> or people will think we are just uh, deceiving one another. To subdue kingdoms. We have different kind of announcements coming on in our TV station, on our, in our different television stations. Not a full program like the man again, but just some few minutes, like uh, five minutes or two minutes, you know, two minutes adverts about uh, extra sensitive power, uh, you know, astrological powers of some people coming to interview them. Each time I remove one, another one comes. <laughs> I keep on removing them. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Master, I pray that you really speak to us today. May this not be the voice of man, let it be the voice of God. <clears throat> Fill your servant and make him your instrument and your vessel today. Use this vessel of clay to be an agent of your glory. Speak to us. Change us. I spine in our minds. Who thought in higher places? I thank you that you're doing that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews, Hebrews of course, 11, verses 32 to 34. 32 to 34. And what more shall I say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, and Barak, and Samson, and Jephthah, also of David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, walked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of, of lions, Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weaknesses, out of weakness, were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned the fly, to fly the army of the aliens. Please, will you make me louder, Eddie? Because, uh, my, you know, especially in the morning, but, uh, anyhow. Behind every achievement, yeah, that's excellent. Behind every achievement in the kingdom of God is faith. Faith underlines every great name we meet in the scripture. Faith is the basis for greatness in this kingdom that we find ourselves in. It's the law of our existence. We live by it. We breathe by faith. We wake up by faith. By faith we walk with God. By faith, we will minister to him every day. By faith, we receive what from him. By faith, we feel his heart beat. Faith is supposed to be the law of our system. By faith, we, we, our, the, 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 the life of God flows through our system. Just like the body of, just like the blood of Jesus circulates. I mean, just like the blood, our blood circulates in our blood system. By faith, the life of the, of the Lord Jesus is supposed to be flowing in us. By faith, we should communicate with him. And by faith, we hold on to heaven, living right here on earth. Faith that subdues kingdom. I am trusting God to impart something supernatural to you this morning. That will make you to believe God that he, like you have never believed God before. Because you are going to hear faith like you have never heard it before. This is not theory faith. This is not faith step one, faith step two. This is going to be faith that will come to your spirit. Impact it and uplift you into higher ground. You are going to start saying your heart is going to become the, like the house of lion. You're going to be born like lion because it says the, 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 the lion is, is as you know the righteous is as bold as lion. Hello, faith makes us bold as, as lion to confront every force of the enemy. No animal will ever dare stand before a lion. We are lions in the spirit. We make everybody run away from our path. Yes, we subdue principalities. 
We shave powers out of this thing. Yes, we destroy by the power of God the forces of wickedness. That is who we are. We cause it. We know how to do it now. You know how to deal with the homosexualism that are running here. You, you, you apply as Ezekiah chapter 5 to them. You release a curse on them, on the movement, on the house of the king, and those who swear falsely by the, by, 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 by the name of the Lord. You make a snare and a smile and a, you know, and a laughter out of you. You release a curse. You let the throne go out of the presence of the Lord. That's what you do. Because by the word of his mouth, he shall judge the earth. Hallelujah. By faith, Abraham ruled over the earth, uh, over, over, the, over the planet earth. By, by, by faith, he became the ruler, the, the ruler of the planet. That is who we are. We join together with God to have his faith. And to rule, like he rules in heaven, we rule here on earth. That is our position. Faith makes such control nations. Faith, we take, by faith we take kingdoms. We are not supposed to be just citizens of a country. We are not English. We are not Germans. We are not French. We are not just so on. We are representatives of the kingdom of God. We are God's ambassadors here on earth. We are here to take possession of the territories where he has placed us to live in. We have rep- his representatives here. As he is God, so do we. We, 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 do, we do we to the things of this world. We are God over the animals. We are God over the societal evils also. Not just God to eat. We are children of God. We are like our father. Faith is what makes you to exercise your authority in the spiritual realm. Without faith, you cannot contact heaven. Without faith, you are just a, a, a flesh and blood. That's all. You don't have any significance in the spiritual realm. Faith pivots you into the heavenlies and makes you sit in the heavenly parliament with God and decide and decide earthly matters. That's what we do by faith. We sit with Him in the heavenly table, just be, before the heavenly table, and we discuss issues and resolve the problems of the earth. That's what we do by faith. Faith should project your life. It should project the, 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 the events around you. He says, by who, who by faith, the people who, who, who we follow, the people who handed over Christianity to us, they are people who by faith subdued kingdom. The Christianity we receive, the faith we receive, the thing, the gospel we have come to believe in is the gospel of the men who through faith subdued kingdom, who through faith subdued kingdom. We are supposed to be the con- continuation of what they have started. We continue to subdue kingdoms. We don't just make ourselves subject to kingdoms. No, we subdue kingdoms. We take over territories in the name of the Lord. We know who we are. We are partners with God. We are friends of His. By faith, Abraham walked with God. But through, through this faith, people know Him. People talk to God. Abraham, Adam spoke to God in the evening and, and he swore with God in the tide of the evening. By faith, he walked with God. By faith, he played with God. By faith, his mind was expanded and energized to name all the animals of the earth and the, and the plants and give the name and his mind didn't explode. He did it by faith. His mind cannot explode because he did it by faith. He started doing it. He didn't say, God said, I will bring all the animals to you. Start naming them. He didn't say, oh God, what do you mean? He just said, well, I will do it. He started naming them and his mind started expanding. Started expanding. And he could name hundreds of thousands of animals, of objects like that. Of objects like that. By faith, he did that. By faith, he managed to get the Garden of Eden. By faith, he provided for all the needs of his wife. By faith! By faith, Abraham overcame all the enemies that came against him. By faith, he became the, the father of nations. We are his children. We, we, don't, we are not satisfied with one man being saved or two men being saved in service. Or we are not satisfied with small buildings of churches. We are to pastor nations. Nations. So if you are having a church of 1,000 or 2,000, you think it's a big deal. Big deal. Big deal. Big deal. God is interested in nations. Take us taking our position in Him and saying, I know it is going to happen. 
Just like Pastor uh, Ashley has been saying. England is due. This is the time of England. And we are going to take this country. Yes! We say it by faith. And we don't just declare it because everybody says it. We know it. We resolve the issues with God. By faith, everybody, every achievement that you could ever recall in the Bible, they did it by faith. For you to be great in this kingdom, you need to be a man of faith. There is no option for you. That is the only way you write your name in the history of time. You need to believe God when your head is saying, no, 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 I can't believe this. You need to release the belief of the, the faith of the heart. That of the, of, the, of the heart. You need to go ahead and keep on believing God anyway. Faith. Faith to subdue kingdom. It says, for by faith they subdue kingdom. They walk righteousness by faith. What is that? They brought righteousness not to, just to their life. You didn't know. You, you don't need to bring righteousness to your life. Jesus did that. They wrought righteousness, bringing righteousness to their generation. That's it. They wrought righteousness, bringing righteousness to their societies. They wrought righteousness, bringing righteousness to the nation where God has placed them upon, to the countries where they are living. Wrought in righteousness, wrought in righteousness, walk in righteousness. By faith, you can impose the righteousness of God upon this city. Faith does it. We bring it down like a cloud. Faith to subdue kingdom. Faith to subdue kingdom. When you, when that is the, that is the, that is the power that Jesus had. Jesus didn't have any other power but the power of the gospel. That's why Romans, in Romans 1, 6, 16 says, for I do not, you know, what does it say? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God. So salvation. We bring salvation to men by the power of the gospel. We bring salvation to nations by the power. It is the power of God. Don't, don't tell me the gospel is to blame. Don't tell me you are waiting on God. Stop! The kindergarten is not you. You are not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. He has given you the power to do it. The power, the power of salvation to every nation is here. We have it. For you are not ashamed of the power. You are not ashamed of power. Power is a good thing to be proud of. For it is the power of not going the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, but because it is the power of God unto salvation. Power of God to salvation. So everybody that will believe. So everybody. We had it doesn't matter. Is it a Jewish nation or a Greek nation or a Gentile nation? Both to the Jews and to the Gentiles and to the Greek. The power of God will submit everybody to it. The power of God will incline everybody to bow down. Either it's a Jew or a Gentile or a Greek. The power of God is no difference. Either there's Slovenia or there's Ukraine or there's America or there's England. Don't tell me that God is God's a hard place. No! Forget about it. The power of God to salvation. He doesn't say, he's an idol. It doesn't matter. He, he, had a high, he had a much more harder time than any one of us with the Jews. Paul had a, a, a hell of a hard time. <laughs> yet, yet it, it, that doesn't disturb him by his fault from saying, it is still the power of God to even the Jews to save them. And he saved a number of them. <laughs> it went anyway. They were planning to kill him. It went anyway. With the power of God, it was believed in God that man. That is true. So the power of God is the gospel. What is faith? Faith is the force to release that power. The power of God is enough to subdue any nation. The power of God is enough to subdue and to convince anybody. But faith, your faith must be enough. You must inject faith into the gospel. You must go to a nation seeing it already under your feet. You must know that this is the acceptable year of the law for that country. You must see that in the country, you, the only thing you need to do is to bring the acceptance to them, to pronounce to them, we are, we are here to help you. I'm here to deliver you. You are free. I went to town yesterday. I, I, I only regretted about one thing. 
I didn't have invitation to the church. I would have brought 20 people here yesterday. I went to the shop. I saw so many people you could save that could be saved. You have so so such a ripe, such a ripe harvest. Wow. I was watching the television television programs. People are so much interested. Is this spiritual thing real? Ah, this uh, wishes thing or is it real? When people are start, when people start showing interest openly, even on TV, in spiritual things. It is because we are, they, they have not seen that the most spiritual thing is you in the church. So they are looking for the wishes. They are looking for the wisdom. They are looking for who again? The psychic. You are making a. I, I'm supposed to make an open show of you, not you of me. We should go and make an open show of them. Make a display that God is here. God has come to town. That is why my first five years in Ukraine, I was not ready to argue with anybody. I was there to declare and to make even the skeptics and the atheists and the communists believe and see that they don't have any option than to agree that there is something called God on the planet Earth. So for the five, five years, I made Half a million people come to my church to see the power of God and give their life as, as, and accept Jesus as the life as their Lord and Savior. Not to build church yet, just to make be, to not make them know that there is a center where an address where God lives, and for the voice to keep on resounding all over the country that there is something going on in our land. Even if you don't believe it, you can't escape the news. By faith, we impose the gospel upon people because we know it is the power of God. We believe it, so we bring it as the answer to them. We don't see them as hard. What is hard to God? That's rubbish. Remove it from your dictionary. I was going with the boys yesterday, with, with, you know, with the boy, and, and I saw so many people I could bring to church. I never, I never, you know, the way we went yesterday, and was just, I don't do that in Ukraine. When I go out, I go with a bag full, you know, of tracks and newspapers like you are your newspapers and everything and I make everybody in the church to do that. You don't just go to shop and pass by people. You are passing by right harvest. Who are you? What are you here for? What are you here for? You don't know your destiny? You don't know you are supposed to be managers of the earth? Go and impose God upon them. Either they like it or not. So usually when I go to such a place, I make them receive. Take it. You don't want. And I see so many people distributing some rubbish. You know, go come to a well fed fair, come to this place, come to shop, go and shop. And people are receiving. And I say, then where are the tracks of the gospel? We just assume they will not receive. We just assume they are not. Hey, wow, no, yo, book. my God. I went to Canada one time, not to preach, just to visit. And I was visiting, visiting with some Christians. So we went to the park just for a stroll. And, uh, you know, they, they were, I was, I, I was seeing so many people in the park. I mean, in the, in the park. So I said, give me some papers. Give me the, your address. Write in the paper. I, I want to go and speak to these people. Something, you have a church in town and you are walking in park. You're supposed to be in church. And he said, no, don't do that. We don't evangelize in the streets here because people are tired of Christians and uh, they feel they are fanatics. And so we evangelize separate, you know, in a different way. So how do you evangelize? We just walk with people. We allow them to see our Christian lives. How we, you know, that we are not uh, fake, that we are, you know, real Christians. And then when they see that maybe we are real genuine, then they might like to come. They, they will come and ask. What church do you go to? Maybe you like to go to your church. I said, forget about it. You don't give me your track to your church, I will go anyway. So I went and, you know, just and just by, you know, maybe just, just, you know, just by accident, the people asked us to help them snap. They were taking photographs, you know. <laughs> they said, can you help us take some shots? I said, oh, that's an advantage, that's an opportunity for me to come to them. So I did it. And I said, then when I was giving them back the camera, I said, oh, do you know what? I've got something more precious to you 
that I can do for you than just nothing. I have a good news for you. There is a church in your town. You're supposed to be there. He said, no, 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 we are. <laughs> well, the hours, I've never been to church since the point of, since, since of the 60s. The last time I was in church was 1967. That was the year I was born. I said, oh, that's the year I was born. I said, I'm from Russia, and I'm a believer. I said, I said no, we're in a hurry, we're in a hurry, we have to go. I said, well, uh, well, you know, just remember, when it gets tough, come. Then as I was saying that, I said, I, you know, just trying to, because they wanted to just brush me off and say, yeah, we're we in a hurry, we have to go. I, 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 I recognize that. Then I wanted to say, well, when, you know, when you have anything going wrong with you, just come to the church, you know. Then God gave me a word. I just saw a vision of one of them in a car accident and with a, with a broken knee. And I said, hey, you man, stop. I want to pray to, for you now and prove to you that God is true and he wants to heal your knee. You were in a car accident 15 years ago and God wants to touch you. I said, oh, interesting. I didn't give you that. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of people right there. Oh. I had the revival right in the park. Oh. <laughs> and the people who are, who are with me, Christians, you know, big time. Oh. I said, don't just look at me like that. Spread the news. Go and talk to those other ones there. Faith to subdue kingdom. Faith. To subdue kingdom. Look, change your mentality about church. You are not just here to have a nice time. We are here to possess the land. We are here to subdue and make this land bow down before the name of Christ. We are here to compel the king to see us and to arise and bow. We are here for that. We are here to declare the name of the Lord. And as a very confident people that we are the answer, you should be more confident in yourself about that fact, about the fact that you are the answer to these people. When I go to the shop, when I go to the street, I walk about and I say, people are neglecting me. Sometimes they see me, they say, chocolate. But that's a chocolate girl because of my color. Oh, that's a negro girl. Then I smile and say, yeah, I am your answer. You, you will still come to me. You need me. You need me. Yeah. I smile. I say, you know, I'm glad that you are happy that I'm a Negro going by. Because at least you could smile. You had a reason to smile. <laughs> Maybe you could have been sad otherwise. You know. <laughs> but you could smile. Like, oh, yeah. I said, but I'm the answer. So when people think of dif- they think different things, they could think it's a fanatic. Or, you know, I go thinking something else. I go thinking. I am the answer. I'm the answer. I'm the answer. I'm sent for these people. I am their answer. I am their answer. I am their deliverer. I am their deliverer. I am their deliverer. That is supposed to be the thought invading your mind if you are the subdued kingdom. No, you are placed here as the answer and the deliverer of this land and of everybody living here. You are the answer. Faith to subdue kingdoms. By faith, they subdue kingdoms. By faith, they wrought righteousness. So who are we? What are we doing then? They did it. So we read it as history. Yeah, they did it. Yeah, it was not bad. Yeah, that's a good idea. No! I read the scriptures. What they did. So that I might know what God requires me to do. What they did is just like a standard to me. Of what? I should start with. Why do you read the scriptures or that one? Why do you read the Bible? Just to know history. So we preach the gospel. Oh, you know, on the day of Pentecost, uh, that three thousand of their lives. Okay. Just telling stories. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I've heard that someone said it. That is not the reason it was written. It was written that I might see it. It preached. Three thousand gave their lives. How did they do it? That is what God is requiring me to do. I see. That is my position. I am in his position today. He did it in his time because that was his time. Now it's my time. I am the one living today. I'm the one representing Christ today. God is expecting me to do that same thing. 
I see to shake my Jerusalem. My Jerusalem is bright. I am here. I am God's answer. I am today's Peter. I am today's Paul. So I compel the town to listen to me. If on the means to do that, I should find my own means of doing it. What could make a 19 year old boy from Africa that never knew his father? That had to sell firewood to go to school. What could make him go to Russia at 19? With faith in God. That by God, by God, I will be made strong and wicked. By God, I will walk right. I will walk, I will run righteousness. By God, I will stop the mouth of the lion. Yes. By God, I will escape the edge of the sword. By God, I will subdue that nation but to the glory of God. By God, I will do it. And now you don't need to go to Russia to hear about me. You don't need to go to Ukraine. Go to Russia. Go to Belarus. Go to Latvia. Go to Estonia. Go to anywhere. The effects are everywhere. The effects are everywhere. Faith to subdue kingdom. How do you reason? How do you see yourself? You see yourself well as someone existing. 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 That's not bad. You only need to eat to exist. We are not just living to exist. We are living to procreate life. Faith to subdue kingdom. So you missionaries that were ordained yesterday, the apostles prayed on you. You are not supposed to go, oh yeah, get a small hole. Yes, at the church. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Every Sunday come together and sing. Have a nice time. Uh, don't ever see yourself as such missionaries. And as such pastors. See yourself as someone, if God is sending you to that city, see yourself as a city on a planted on the hill of that city. You are that city. You are that town planted on the hill. So you are above, you are not below. They are below you. Until you see yourself above, you cannot conquer your town. So you have to see spiritually, mentally, psychologically, yourself always as above. And for us to be able to see ourselves as above, that is why Jesus resurrected himself and us with him. And made us to sit down with him in the right hand of the Father. So that we might see ourselves from, the, from above. Not just so that we might know good scriptures and preach good messages. But that you might know that I am above. I rule from there. That's the reason I have to know. And I have to make everything subject to me. I rule with him from there. I live here, but my authority I exercise from there. From the right hand of him. Who has taught me, loved me, chosen me, and trusted me to subdue nations for him. That's the reason. That is the reason. That is the truth. You know it. Ephesians 2, 6, you know it. Because it is said, He that is from above is above all. Where are you from? But you know, sometimes you forget. Mentality has to change. When your mental, mentality is saying that I am the one from above. I am situated above. Because he that is from above has to be above all. Yes. You see. You see. Bakutoboko shikabotika kutobojo. Then from there you exercise your authority and make your subject. Because if you are from above, it means those ones below you are your subject. They are supposed to be subjected to you. You make them subject to you by faith. That is faith that brings it into operation. It is faith that brings it into operation. So when I go to any town, you know, I've been traveling only in Ukraine or all over the former Soviet Union. You know, they say hard place, hard place. You know, people don't give their lives and churches are not great. You are demeaning the gospel. Just let me come. You've invited me. Let me just come. That's what I what needs to happen. Because I carry him everywhere. Jesus cannot come to a city and there will be no 
no, no change, no reaction. There has to be a reaction. And the same thing was with the apostles. You know, Acts say chapter 17, verse 6. When they came into that city of, of, of Thessalonica, they said, Oh, here comes those who turn the world upside down. I cannot believe that the church will be in a society for a year and for the society not to be in chaos. Chaos. Chaos, or what do you call it? Yeah, to be up and down. To be upside down. To be in a chaos. To be, to be in a 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 whole in a, in a whole lot of noise because of you. Two years is too much. Two years is too much. Then they knew I was alive. Uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, by that time <laughs> we were only one thousand. The first year we were one thousand. The second year we were two. The third year we were three. The fourth year we were four. The fifth year we were six. This, this is the sixth year now. The, the sixth year we are fifteen. And that is not, you know, that's just about the membership here. But I'm not about membership. I'm not interested in that. That's you know, shy is play. The effect of your word, the effect of your presence should be felt not just in the town or in the church building. You should feel the air and the atmosphere. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes, that's where it is. Until you believe you don't reign in this kingdom. Until you believe you don't reign. You don't reign in power. Unto them that believe, unto them that believe, will you believe to subdue? Will you believe to wrought righteousness? Will you believe to ob obtain the promises? Will you believe? For not only unto God everything is possible, but I dare to tell you, brethren, that everything is possible not only to God, but also to anyone that would dare believe. You have to believe to see the glory. Because it is said, believe and you will see the and you shall see the glory of God. Until you believe, you don't dream of glory. Forget about it. Faith to subdue kingdom. Faith to subdue kingdom. Faith to subdue kingdom. If, if you will believe, Bakutobosho, Bataya, Mukutobotobotende, you will see the glory of God. If you will only believe, you will see the glory of God. Now, if you will only believe, you will see the glory of God. Now, if you will only believe in Brighton today, you will see the glory of God. Now, if you will only believe in England, in France, in, 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 in Germany, Slovenia, Spain, everywhere, if you will only believe, you will see the glory of God. If you only believe, if, or if you shall believe, but if you only can believe, there is glory waiting. The problem is not with God. The glory is ready to be released. The glory is ready to be manifested. But if only you will believe. If only you will believe. If only. If only. If only. If only. If only. If only you will. For it is the power of God to anyone. You might be small. You might be a man or a, a female. It doesn't matter. If you will dare believe, the men will come to you to learn how to, how to do it. Black or white, if you will believe, you will make everybody your students. To him that believes. To him that believes. To him that believes. To him that believes. To him that believes, to him that believes, it is the power of God. The power of God is not released until you, have, you, you, you qualify yourself by faith. The power of God is not released 
until you qualify yourself by faith. The power is not accessible until you qualify yourself by faith. It's not accessible to him that believes. To him that believes. To him that believes. To him that believes. For everything is possible unto him that believes. To him that believes that everything is possible. That, that makes you in the, category, in the category of God. Because everything is possible only to the Almighty God. But he says, there is something that will qualify you to stand on the same platform as me. That is your faith. If you will believe, just like everything is possible to me as God, so shall it be unto you. For it is said, it shall be so as it is spoken. So, so as you have believed, so shall it be unto you. As you have believed, so shall it be unto you. Some of you believe that so your revival is near. So shall it be near till you die. Until you have believed, so shall it be unto you. <laughs> As you have believed, so shall it be unto you. Jesus didn't say, go and preach that your revival is near or it is coming. He said, look at the others, black and white. The revival is white and wild and white. Put in the sickle. Put in the sickle. That's what he said. He said, pray for the Lord of the others, not to send the others. Because the others is here. To send labor. Faith to subdue. When you start believing Jesus, you start being small. I mean, you, you stop being small. When you start believing the real faith, you stop being small. I'm embarrassed these days to preach on faith, you know. They have useless faith by teaching it as if it's an experiment. As if it's, as if it's arithmetic. So I'm, I don't, I'm not enthusiastic again about preaching on faith. You don't preach faith, you demonstrate. Two steps to believe, four steps to do, you know, six steps. <laughs> six steps to believe, six steps to heal, six steps to do. You know. they, they made the power of God into experiments and into equations. <laughs> God is not equation. These are spiritual things. Faith is not an equation. It's a spiritual thing. <laughs> when you start believing, you stop being small. You start rising. I say you start rising. I say you start rising. Who is ready to, for an upliftment here today? Who is ready for an upliftment here today? You will be raised in your job. You will be raised in your ministry. You shall be raised in your home. You will be raised in your finances. If you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believes. All things, all things, all things, all things are possible to him that believes. If you only believe, both to the Jews, to the Greek, and to the Gentiles, for in it, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is is what is revealed. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So if you cannot do something today, it's because you have not grown from faith to faith. Just take a higher step in faith. It will be possible tomorrow. That is why we are rising all the time. That's why we are climbing high all the time. For it's revealed from faith to faith. The secret of the growth of faith is revelation. That is where it is necessary. When it is revealed to you, you take another jump of faith. Because in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. Revealed from faith to faith. Revelation takes you higher. From one level of faith to another. Indeed, it is revealed. 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 The righteousness of God. As your eyes open, the higher you climb. Because in it, the the righteousness of God is revealed. As your eyes are open to the righteousness of God, the higher you climb. The higher you climb. The higher you grow. So these days you've been growing in, an, in a way that you could not even express yourself. If I were you, I would, I would lock myself up after this conference, get all the tapes, 
and listen to them thoroughly. Ten, ten times it. Because in it, in the gospel, in it, is the righteousness of God revealed. As you see God's righteousness, as you receive revelation from faith to faith, you are making some leap of faith. And you are going to higher grounds. And you will start experimenting and experiencing things that you had never even attempted to think in your thought, talk less of acting in that. Faith to subdue kingdoms. We are about kingdom business here. We are about subduing kingdom. We are about brethren ruling the earth. We are about ruling the earth. We are about lording it over the earth. It is about dominion. It is about dominion. Gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Jesus came armed and equipped with it. That's why it says in Luke chapter 4, Verses 18 to 19, he said, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me. To preach the gospel, the good news. To preach the good news. That is the instrumentality by which we ought to be subjected. Because it believes in it. He didn't say the angels have come with me. No. <laughs> the gospel is <laughs> to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That is all. That is all. That is all. By it, the heaven will be reconciled to the earth. That's all. Proclaim. You are free already because it's sees it in the spirit. For faith is not believing in the non-existence. It is existing in my mind, in my spirit. I see it before I possess it. That is why faith is the evidence of things not seen. It's not seen doesn't mean that it does not exist. It's existing right here. If you don't see it in the physical, I see it in my spirit. How do you see England? How do you see Brighton? Or you see revival as non-existent. That's why you never need it. That is not faith. Faith will see it. <laughs> because it knows that it exists. So, the evidence of things not seen doesn't mean evidence of things not exist. Is a system. It is a system. For Second Corinthians 4, 18 says, seeing, I mean, looking onto things that are not seen. How do you look when they are not seen? How do you look when they are not seen? However, that's very simple. Because everything that is seen is temporal. So if, the, if, if there is no revival right now, it's, that's, that's not a big deal. I'm seeing revival because what I'm seeing now is temporal. So you look at the things that are not seen. That's what I that, that's what I live by. That's what I project myself by. That's what dictates my actions. But if you let your actions be dictated by the things that you see, you are a man of yesterday. A man of past, I mean, God, you know, past, you know, you know, yesterday. Gone years. To be a man of the future, I'm a man of creation, like your father is. You've got to learn to look at things not seen. Are you here with me? Every one of us can possess a kingdom and become a father of a nation. Right here in this hall, you can be determined. You can take a decision to take a city or a nation for God and it shall be done unto you. I assure you of that, and I will prove that to you. Now, let's open the Bible. Let's open it and see. Romans. Sometimes, people don't know how to react to me in here, in Ukraine. I'm like a phenomenon <laughs> to them. <laughs> phenomenon, you know. Just someone, you say, oh, uh, 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 someone you cannot, uh, you cannot really predict a man. You're someone you cannot really for tell what is he or who is he? What is he going to do? He's doing things that seems unusual and not normal. So most of the time, when I go to the public, I leave my church, 
when I go to be with the Christian people, I just keep my mouth shut most of the time. I don't talk. Because when I talk one thing, it's so far beyond people's imagination that they think this guy is too proud. <laughs> you see, let me tell you something about pride. Come on here now. God's problem with the believers is not a pr- problem of pride or proudness. It's a problem of knowing for them to know who they are, actually. If you are proud, God knows how to break you. He will break you into pieces. Nothing will remain out of you. <laughs> pride is self-destruction. So you don't fool with it. But the problem of God, actually, is the, for you to be able to know who you are. That is the major problem, the big deal with God. The major problem of God with us. But because we are afraid of being proud, trust God with your life. When you see yourself as God sees you, you don't know what is pride. You don't even know his existence. But if you had been living in the days of Jesus, when they say, when you see me, you see the Father. Because I know, oh, you will stone me. Just when I say, if I come, God comes. I am his carrier, courier <laughs> of God. I dwell with him. You told me something last night about the history of your funded movement. And I, he didn't tell, tell me anything. And I, nobody said, I didn't want to tell you yesterday. But actually, when I was praying about the conference, I knew you were I knew your story from the beginning. Before I met you. Because we meet with him. That is the biggest problem of God. To see us. To, to get us. To see things exist. And how it exists. That is the problem of God. And we are saying, oh, you know. Supposing they will think I am proud. Then you will become like them. And remain like them. To do something nobody else has done, you have to be ready to risk what nobody has ever risked. So don't be afraid of English courtesy and uh, <laughs> and modern, you know, culture. The whole hell will break loose, but break the culture. Until you break the culture, you don't break the nation. Because if the culture has you under its hand, you will never be better than those who have been there before you. So I like the fact that you are wide in it. I like the fact that I couldn't recognize an embrace in it. Yeah, that's a good beginning. And that's why I said in the, in the, in, in, in the, in the first or second day, that all this needs to go to the street. There is no means, I mean, there is no sense in you being white here if, you are, if it's not going to be known to the world around. If you are just white here, it means you are in a council. Let them know who you are, as you are. Right where you live. Then they will not be able to neglect you. <laughs> They will act on the act anyhow. Good or bad. Good or bad. And when they have problems, they will know where to go to. <laughs> uh, I said, each one of you can inherit a nation. Even as you are now. You can take a decision to take a nation for God. Or a town or a city for God. And you will be able to do it. And I want to show you how to do it. I want to show you that it's true what I said. Romans chapter 4. Is it too deep, no? It's okay? Okay. This is not a deep one. Yesterday was the deepest one. I was really afraid of people getting... Yeah. (laughs) 
people getting, uh, you know, mixed up or just losing the whole thing yesterday. But you did a good job. You cop, you cop, it's real good. Everybody got it, yeah. So this is like a ship on. Everybody be happy about that, you know. So this is not a big deal. You get it. Romans chapter 4, verse 13. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham. Let's say, it was not to Abraham. Say it again. Or to his seed through the law. Okay, now listen what follows. But through righteousness of faith, all my life, even with the school, with the, with the, with the school of word of faith, I had thought that Abraham, you know, got the promise to be the father of nations just because God promised him. Because he was chosen. If it had been because he was chosen, or because he is, he was, uh, uh, he was, uh, you know, called of God, he was selected of God, then it could have been of law. If it had been that it's just for him alone because he was called, favored, and then it's just of law. But they say, this promise is not to him. Although he said through the law, he got the promise and the, the blessing of being the father of nations, not because he was called. When he was called by God, God promised him that in Genesis 12. But he couldn't receive it, though he was promised. That is why you must go beyond the level of saying, well, it is written uh, by his tribe, I'm healed. So you think you are healed. And you are still sick. So when he had the promise, it was not enough for him to get the inheritance, to get the promise. So on the, you know, chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 20, right to chapter 15, he couldn't even get about it. <laughs> right to chapter 18. Why? Only in chapter 15, he got it. But only in chapter 18, he, he got the baby. But he received the baby by, by faith in chapter 15. Because in chapter 15, when God appeared to him again, Abraham instead said, God, but you said I'm going to become father of nations. I don't believe you. That's what he said. Abraham was not just father of righteousness or friend of God. He said this in chapter 15, Genesis 15. Said, I don't believe you. That's why I had to go and be with the wife, with my, with my, with the, with the, with the, with the maid. Of our house. He doesn't believe it. He didn't believe it. So God had to do an experiment. Perform an experiment on him. After the experiment of God. He would not just promise this time. Expanded his mind. He showed him the stars. After the experiment. But to make him see. And imagine it. Then after he saw the stars. And God said can you count? He said no. Then he himself came to say the Bible says, now Abraham believed God. Now. That was when he got it. Baby. And that was when he became the father, the inheritance, I mean the, the, the heir of the promise. That was on the only time the promise could become his, to become the father of nations. And if that was the way he got to become father of nations, we will read later that that is the way everyone else can also position himself and become a father of any nation, of, of, a, a, of a nation where God is directed into. Not because he was chosen, not because he was promised to by law, no, because he believed it is his faith now that qualified him to become. If he had not, if there had not been 15 chapter of Genesis, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have become any father of any nation. So that it might be by grace and not by, by law. It has to be true faith. So let's read it again, verse 13. And that's not all. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham. Or to his seed through law. No. But through the righteousness of faith. 
It means, if it is true faith, everybody can have it. Now, read verse 16. Again, let's read it together. I mean, let's, let, just watch me. I mean, just let's, let, let me read it for you. Therefore, it is, it is of faith that it might be according to grace. So that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham. Not who are of the seed of Abraham, but who are of faith of Abraham. Not those who are of the law like Abraham. No, but who just have a similar faith like Abraham. Who is the father of us all. So, if you will have a similar faith, just like Abraham had faith, it is saying that same promise so that it might be not to the seed of the law only, not to the seed of Abraham only, but so that the promise to become here of nations could be a possession and a possibility for everybody. That is why I from Africa that don't, didn't know his father that was never raised up in a privileged home, I position myself to become not the father of Ukraine alone. You will see, you will hear news. I know how to do it. I know how to possess it. Nations will see me as their father. And it's not bragging. You know, don't think about bragging. Now forget about it. Come to God. I'm trying to help you grow up. I might not tell you that. I will just be doing it. You just be, you just be looking. Ah, how did he do it? He's a great, great man of God. What great man of God? Just seeing it here. I'm doing it. I'm possessing it. So why I'm telling you this is not to brag. Uh, forget about those level of thinking. To help you do the same thing. You can become a peer of a nation. You can possess and subdue a nation. The way, the secret behind it is not the selection or the, the, or the, or the choice of Abraham. That he was called from his country and he was obedient. He didn't know where I was going. So, you know, those things didn't help him to become one. <laughs> he never got to that brother. <laughs> he went down to Egypt after that. He met God. All those things took place before God helped him. I'm brought into the place of faith. And God has sent me to bring you to the place of faith. That you might know it's a simple possibility for you to also become a hero of the nation. Just like we in Africa say, we are children of Livingston, David Livingston, Englishman. Scotchman. So also, <laughs> so also men will say, we are descendants of Ashley, of Solomon, whoever it was, you know, of David, of, uh, you know, Sarah, of, uh, Susan, of, you know, whatever her name is. You will have a whole lineage and whole nation. Because you have believed while you are alive. For everything is possible to him that believes. You will become fathers of nations. That is what we are all about. Not about church. No. Stinking. American kind of thing, you know, mentality. Church, 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 church. Oh, how many people do you have? Oh, big deal. No big deal here. You, lower your, you are lowering my reputation, my dignity. I am about nations, about becoming fathers of nations, not church, not church building. I pastor in my city, minimum of 200,000 people. I pastor. People who see me as a pastor. But they are not in my church. But when they see me in the street, they come and kiss my hand, you know. No, maybe not give my but I can <laughs> <laughs> So don't never think that your church is what the building you have. Grow bigger. Think in on the in the in the in the into the extent and in the level and in the terms of being a heir of a nation, a father of a nation. And it is a possibility to you. Because it says, it is not by law. It is not by selection. So that in those ones who will, like Abraham, believe. That's what verse 16 is saying. 
who will like Abraham believe, who will like Abraham have faith, so that they also might possess the promise. That is what they say in the other spirit. That we too might be able to be called in our days fathers of Moses. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Every one of us is God is right. The opportunity, the possibility to become, to, to inherit, to become Lord and Father of nation, of all nations. That was about. And that is what the, 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 the glory of the future church that I preached on the first day is about. We are going to rule and reign here as kings and lords. You will. You will. The hell, the planet Earth will wake up by the reason of the operation of the church of the living God. We will shake it to its foundation. You wait. And you know, when I talk like this, I don't want people to say, oh, he's just saying, it. Uh, I've done it. He's already never been to Ukraine. I've become a nuisance to the government. <laughs> oh, is it what do you call it? Nuisance? Yeah. Yeah, it's thorn in the, it's thorn in the flesh. They wanted to get rid of me. They send the KGB. They send the, you know, you know, the, the, the Attorney General. Everybody is around. They, they, they establish a surveillance, of course, riding after me and police coming to arrest me. And I'm still here. And I'm still here. They couldn't do anything. They seized my passport. They, they withdrew my visa. They did everything. I told them, it shall be as I say. So someone they came to me from the KGB, called me to the street and gave me a sheet of paper where several conditions are written. Then he said, you have to sign it or work with us. If you don't work with us, we are going to get rid of you. Then one woman came to me one day and said that, well, my wife is working in the Attorney General's office. And they said, if we can't get him by the law, we'll blow him up in the car. I'm not supposed to be subjected to bombs and guns. They, saw, they are subjected to me. So the daughter was say, telling her, don't go to that church again because it's going to be a scandal. They're going to blow him up. They, you don't joke with secret uh, services and things like that. He's joking with them. He's risking too much. He's too bored. He's mad crazy. He's, he was just, what does he think of himself? I, I say, Mama, when I'm dead, you could stop coming to church. Hold on till I'm alive. You are at peace. Let them blow me up. You, 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 you are not looking at kingdom as we are. Oh, they can do anything else. We are from above. We are from above. We are from above. We are sitting in the high places with him in Christ Jesus. I'm hidden. To blow me up, you have to blow the, the Christ Jesus where I'm hidden first. Because I'm inside. You blow him up first, so he can get me. You know, I'm inside. He's I'm over. You have to penetrate through him to get me. So do it. Do it. Do it. Because he says your life is hidden in Christ Jesus. Your life is hidden where? Where is it hidden? In Christ Jesus. So, you know, why should you be afraid of man? So, think in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the area of taking your nation from God. Think in the area of possessing the land. Let's read that verse uh, 16 again. Romans 4, 16. I'm going to show you something that will empower, empower you mightily. I'm sure you've read it. We have read it twice today. But let's read it again. Your eyes will be open wide now. And you'll go for it. Verse 16 says, Therefore it is by faith, it is of faith, that it might be according to, according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the, all the seed, to all the seed, to all the seed, to all the seed. Not only to those who have the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham, who is the father of all. 
Now listen closely. For it is therefore of faith that it may be according to grace. It is of faith so that to all the seeds, so that even the seeds that are not of law might inherit the promise. Which promise? Of becoming fathers of nations. So it is of faith that grace might be released for you to become fathers of nations. It is of faith, so that because faith is released only by grace, according to verse 13. Faith, I mean, I mean, grace, I'm sorry, is released only by faith. So when you release your grace, you get in exchange grace to become. Verse 13 and verse 16, combine it and think about it. Your faith releases grace for you to become whoever. Your faith in healing releases grace for healing, so you get healed. Your faith in, uh, 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 in speaking in tongues releases the grace. So you speak in tongues. Your faith in, in knowing in the, the fact that you could become a here a, a, a father of nations releases the grace for you to become father of nations. Because until the grace is there, you are incapable. So the grace releases grace. I mean, the faith releases grace. So that's why I'm preaching on faith to, co- to subdue kingdom. When you release faith today with me to God, God sends something from heaven. He sends grace to do it. So when you believe God today that you are going to become a here, a, a father of nations, when you send the signal of faith to heaven, he will send something down. Because until there is evaporation of here on earth, there is no rain from heaven coming down. So there must be evaporation of your, of your faith to the cloud, to the heavens, before the rain of grace will be released on you. That is how it works. That is how it works. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. In, is it, is it, what, what science is that? Physics? Or what? You know, rain comes down after a cloud has been built from out of the flames and, you know, vapors coming from the, from the earth, yeah, and filling the clouds, then later on you have rain coming down, isn't it? The same thing, it happens in the spiritual. Until there is an evaporation of your faith from earth. The vapor and the everything of your faith. So God, until it goes to heaven, God is not obliged to release the rain of grace for you to accomplish the purpose. You got the point? So that's why I'm going to finish on Isaiah 53 1. Isaiah 53 1. He says, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Stand up on your feet. I dare to ask you, brethren, today, brothers and sisters, what I preached today, that by faith we can conquer kingdoms. By faith we can rot righteousness. By faith we can obtain promises. By faith we can stop the mouth of lions. It is said in Isaiah 53 verse 1, Who has believed our report? Who has believed the message? Who has believed? For for by faith it shall be unto you as you have believed. Who has believed our report? So him that has believed shall it be done according to, 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 to according as he has believed. So him shall be revealed the hand of the Lord. Who has believed in in, 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 in England today, in Brighton today, that everything is possible to him that believes? Who has believed our message? Who has believed our message? Who has believed that faith of new kingdoms? Who has believed our message? Who has believed that through faith the grace will come to become here of nations? Who has believed our report? Who has believed our report? Because to him that believeth is the arm of the Lord relieved. To him who believeth is the arm of the Lord revealed. Who has believed that everything is possible by faith? Who has believed today, brethren? Who has believed that by faith we could impose righteousness on this society? Who has believed that there is nothing impossible with God? Who has believed oh, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation? To him that believeth. Who shall believe today? Who shall believe in England today? Who shall believe in Brighton today? Who has believed? Who has believed? Who will release the vapor of faith to heaven? And to get in exchange the reign of, of grace. Who has believed? Who has believed? 
If you shall believe, so you shall be revealed the arms of the Lord. Raise up your hands and tell him you believe. Pray your soul out. Praise your, pray your heart out. Faith to subdue kingdoms. Faith to subdue kingdoms. Faith to subdue kingdoms. Tell him, I will take my kingdoms. I will subdue my nations. I will subdue nations. I will take it. I will go for it. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. And by faith, I shall see the arm of the Lord in the old. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I go for it. I go for it. I go for it. I go for it. For by faith they subdue kingdoms. For by faith they subdued kingdoms. For by faith they subdued kingdoms.